not working yet. Um, yes, um, thank you very much, Mr. Barebodic. Uh, thank you also to the team of uh, Simeon Tsumokos, my old colleague from, from Athens, uh, for the invitation and, and best wishes for a quick recovery. Yes, uh, yes, uh, social market economy, it's an interesting topic. But uh, I think we are living now in a period of transition. And I would like to, to speak a little bit of the, about this transition. So uh, now I, as a representative of uh, the German Chamber, uh, I could almost repeat everything what has been said in the, in the panel uh, so far. And, uh, and I could um, stress the contribution of uh, our 400 active investments here in Serbia, which are employing about 60,000 people so far, and uh, that's, uh, that's uh, what it be. But uh, I think uh, as the only foreigner on this panel, I am entitled, I feel free, to uh, add some international aspects to the discussion, because uh, Serbia is not alone in the world, and when we are talking about uh, goals and strategies, I think uh, some uh, developments on, in the, on the international level uh, should be taken into account. And I will confine myself to the uh, most recent uh, developments, developments about the, uh, which I think that they are Yes, they are noticed by the media and by the public in Serbia, but uh, uh, I think the public does not pay enough attention uh, to these uh, recent uh, developments. Who would be, or who would have expected one year ago that completely new ways of thinking would prevail in large sectors of the society in the developed part of the world. There's a new ideology which, for the first time in history, no longer focuses on hu human beings and their wealth, but on the planet, on nature, and on the climate, which have to be defended against human activities. Who would be ex uh, have expected that a 60-year-old girl would be given the opportunity to question the entire current economic system in front of the UN General Assembly, Assembly without any of the uh, political leaders present in the room daring to disagree openly with her. As I mentioned before, there will be uh, numerous developments in the future which uh, we don't know anything about. But there are some, of, uh, some new uh, developments which for sure will occupy us for a long period. And uh, uh, I would like to, to uh, in my short statements, to focus on three of these phenomena. I am sure that they will have a, a direct or indirect impact on the Serbian economy. Uh, these three phenomena are uh, closely linked to each other. They form a kind of a triangle. The first of these phenomena is the trade war that is threatening us and which has already begun between several economies. The second phenomenon is the automotive crisis, which is fueled by the first phenomenon, by the trade wars, on the one hand. But on the other hand, the automotive crisis is also closely linked to the third phenomenon. And uh, this third phenomenon is nothing else than the challenge of climate protection, which is given an uncomparable higher priority today that it was the case even one year ago. Let's start with the automotive crisis. The reasons for the automotive crisis are numerous. Most frequently mentioned is the US trade policy and the response to it from China as well as from the European Union, followed by the Brexit on the second rank, and, uh, but there is also the switch to electric engines, which plays a, plays a role here since, according to experts, the production of an electric car uh, does, not, uh, does need uh, far, is far less labor intensive than the production of a traditional car. 
The German car industry has an additional problem, the so-called diesel crisis, which is due to the uh, wrong assessment of the German car uh, manufacturers who believed that uh, they could stick to the diesel engine for several more years. Last but not least, there is a change in the consumer's behavior. Young people think uh, not more uh, about buying of a car is, um, is uh, a worthwhile goal. It's, for them, it's more uh, some of a burden. A study made by the University of Duisburg-Essen comes to the conclusion that alone between 2018 and 2024, the number of cars to be produced worldwide will be reduced by 35 million uh, pieces compared with the number of cars which could have been produced uh, without the automotive crisis. Thus, the industry is expected to suffer a loss of around 700 uh, billion euros, of which 60%, it is more than 400 billion, will be accounted to the suppliers. And you know the su suppliers of the automotive industry are uh, very important here in G Serbia. The question is, which will be the impact on the Serbian economy? The, the answer probably will be, for the time being, the crisis is not going to damage the Serbian economy since uh, under the pressure, pressure of declining sales and, uh, and um, increasing costs, uh, the companies will uh, stay in places which they consider as very con convenient locations. But when uh, speaking about the year 2030, we must also consider long-term developments. And that's the point where this uh, matter of climate uh, protection comes in. What will happen to the consumer society by 2030? One year ago, this question, I think, would seem to us as far-fetched and unrealistic. But we know that our current economic system worldwide is based on growth especially on the constantly growing production of goods. Is there no growth? If there is no growth, then we have a recession. So far, there does not exist any model of a functioning economy based on permanent stagnation. But nothing less than that is required now by a very strong movement of very young people for sake of climate protection. And since it is doubtless about their future, and no longer about ours, we have to choi uh, no, no choice but to listen very carefully to these youngsters, even if uh, they are seeming to, to, to drag the carpet from under the feet of the world economy at this very right moment. The first decision in the direction of degrowth have already been made. Last week, the EU Commission decided that electrical, electrical devices and similar items must be repairable from 2021 again. This sounds reasonable. It, it, it is reasonable when we consider the limited resources of our planet. No doubt about that. But what does it mean for individual companies and for the economy as a whole? If our washing machines, our mobile phones, computers, cars live three times longer in the future, when it is suddenly considered fashionable not to hold the latest mobile of mobile phones in your hands, but the oldest possible, if it would be considered as morally unacceptable for the industry to generate artificially new needs in order to sell innovative products to the people. In Swedish, a new word has emerged that stands for the shame on feel on fields when using one uh, the shame one feels when using an airplane. How do politics react to this new movement? So far, the leaders are trying to integrate these new ideas somehow into the existing system of market economy. The aim is to make flying more expensive but be it through this uh, additional CO2 taxes or through the well-known trade of 
emission certificates. Yes, okay. But uh, one must not forget the final goal. The goal of the movement, which is dedicated to the protection of the climate, is not that flying becomes more expensive, but that fewer airplanes fly in the sky, that fewer airplanes are built, and that in the end, all of us will travel less and become used again to spend our lives in one place, which was absolutely normal for previous generations. In other words, uh, the ch uh, there are huge changes. Now everything depends on which parts of the world will finally agree to participate in this reorientation of the economy. So far, the phenomenon, the movement, has been largely confined to western part of Europe. But that does not mean anything. When Greta Thunberg arrived in New York by sailboat five weeks ago, she was welcomed by just 100 supporters. After one month, she has spoken in front of the UN, and now everybody knows her all over the world. Now everything, everything depends on the attitude of China, India, USA, and other important countries like Russia, Brazil, or, Ind Brazil or Indonesia. Will they also listen to Greta's message? Or will they do business as usual and simply benefit from the cuts Europe is going to prescribe to itself? This, is, this will be the big bet of the third decade of our century. We, we have to slowly change. So, yes, yes I'm coming to an end. Yes, yes. And what's about Serbia as a small country? It has only limited freedom of action, these issues. But there is a lot at stake of, uh, for Serbia when it comes to industry. At the moment, it's still true that the reindustrialization is the only chance for Serbia to reach European average in its standards of living. This means that Serbia, Serbs, should follow the international debate about the fate of the industrial society much more closely than they have done so far. The reason should be clear, since a large part of the Serbian industry works for the world market, Serbia is now fully involved in the international division of labor. That's why the trade war between the US and the rest of the world, the automotive crisis, or the climate movement, are not stories that happen somewhere far away, but trends which will definitely affect the lives of every single citizen in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, very much.